Our scripture reading this morning is from Genesis uh, chapter 1, verses 26 through 28. And if you'd like to follow along in your pew Bibles. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. Good morning again. Shall I pray? Father, thank you so much for this time. I'm asking you to give us your spiritual discernment and wisdom so we understand your word and apply it to our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. You know, last Sunday, we had worship at the park, and I believe we had a great time with all those visitors from other places. Then I noticed that uh, one guy was standing with other choir members and having a conversation. His name was Wade. His name is Wade, and I believe you know who he is. Actually, we have his picture, would you put it up there? And yeah. And as soon as I saw him, I knew who his mother was. <laughs> Look at uh, their faces, you know, same eyes, same nose, same lips, and same smiles. Is it barb here? Okay, no barb. So we call it carbon copy. Okay? The Korean people call it printing press. So we printed the same newspaper or same article over and over again. Wet had bar DNA in her blood. So it is natural for him to just look like his mother. Now we are created in God's image. It's Imago Dei, Latin word, God's image. We made in God's likeness. We made in God's image. It means that we are carbon copy of God. We are a printing press of God. You know, when you look at my children, you say, oh, Jaden look just like you. Or Logan just look like you. Now, when you look at a uh, Bloyd family, children, then you might say, oh, he just look like his father, or she just like, look like her mother. In the scripture, we see the same thing that we like to hear in Genesis, oh, just a second. I usually mark, but I forgot to mark today. Genesis chapter 5, verse 3, when Abraham had lived 130 years, he became the father of a son in his likeness, according to his image. I'm going to read it one more time. When Abraham lived 130 years, he became the father of a son in his likeness, according to his image. These are the same words you can see uh, Genesis chapter 1. His image, his likeness. So we are created in God's image. So we have God's DNA. We have God's blood inside of us. What we hear in the beginning of this scripture is that in the same way our children resemble us, we resemble God. 
In a similar way, we are created in God's image. And I'm not uh, talking about a, a physical appearance. We know, that, we know that from the scripture that God is invisible, God is the spirit, so we are not physically the same as God. But what we're talking about here is that in some way and some uh, measure, we are created in the image of God, Imago Dei. That's who we are. That's our identity. Then the question is here, what is it that the likeness? What is it that likeness? If I read one more uh, chapter, Bible verses, we just read it, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. Our image, our likeness. It's Trinity. In Latin word, Trinitatis. So when God created us, he created us in God the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. God created us in a divine community. We are created in community with God. The three persons in one essence, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we are created in a community, a divine community. Then the next question is, what it would mean for us to be a community as God's children? You know, uh, one day in the morning, I think a couple of weeks ago, I was running a few blocks around my place, and then I noticed that one guy standing in front of his house, and he was wearing a, a shirt in a red color, and with the logo and Huskers. But at that time, I was wearing a, a, a hat in you know, LA Dodgers. Then he looked at me, he made a joke. He said, hey, uh, LA Dodgers has no place in this place, in this town. So I got this Huskers hat. Since he told me LA Dodgers has no place, so I got this Huskers hat. Do I look good, Oscars? Thank you. Actually, I got this, I borrowed this from uh, Bruce. Thanks, Bruce. And uh, I'm going to give it back to you sometime next year. So I was a Dodgers fan, but now I'm a Oscars fan. Now I'm a Bronco fan. Now I'm a, a Rocky fan. I live in Alliance. I belong to alliance. I belong to a community is here. So when we belong to this community, somehow we share the some aspects of our lives. If we don't share some aspects of our lives, we don't really belong to this community. We become we when we belongs to a community where we share some uh, parts of our lives. But when we talk about we, we is not compound word like you and I. You, know, you and I can go to uh, lunch together. You and I can go to a movie theater. You and I can watch a baseball game or watch the grass grow. Those who smile remember the joke that I made a few weeks ago. To do and touch that, watching a baseball game is like watching the grass grow. So you and I can do something. But here in this the scripture, we is not individual, you and I. It's a divine community. It's a, it's a combined world, me and you and God. You know, in the scripture, Old Testament, God created the universe 
and create the first human beings, then he provided everything for them. So we become we in this creation process. We became we under God's protection. In the New Testament, God came to us in a human flesh, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So we became we in Christ. Then after Jesus' resurrection, the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us. So we became we in the Spirit. In the Gospel of John, it says, in the beginning, the world was with God. The world was God. And we are with God. So we here, we become we. You and I become a community through triune God. Through triune God, the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit. We become we in triune God, to triune God, and from triune God. That's who we are. That's our identity. So when we talk about we as a body of Christ, there's a deeper sense of who we are through the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's not really a simple thing and we. When we talk about the body of Christ, body of the church, it means we belong to God's divine community, God's divine one body. And I'm going to show you a picture, another picture. Would you put it up? A picture, no? Yeah, this one. Thank you. This painting uh, was drawn by a Russian artist, uh, Rublev. I hope my pronunciation is correct. Rublev. One interesting part of this picture, its name is a Trinity. And Rublev, uh, 18th century, he got an inspiration from Genesis chapter 18 where you know, Abraham invited three men into his place and gave them a great hospitality. So the three men promised that, actually it was a blessing, promised that Sarah was going to give birth to a son. And the three men turned out to be angels from God. So Ruble got the inspiration. So she painted this one of the amazing pictures. One thing I love about this picture is when you look at it in the middle, when Ruble painted this picture, he intentionally made an open seat, open room. Can you see that here in the middle? He intentionally made this room where we put up a chair and sit with God, having a conversation with him, having a fellowship with the community of God. That's who we are, the Trinity. God made us according to his image, so we are community belong to divine community. So in community, the Trinity, 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 we have God's invitation. Trinity as a community, it's not just a community that you just pass through. When you belong to this community, we have God's invitation. Like a baby is born, they are automatically invited into parents' arms. Now I'm going to show you the, the baby picture. Would you show the baby picture again? Go back, and we got three pictures, Ben and Will. And would you go next? Jay, Sujan, and Jaden, when he was uh, just, he just born. And next one, and then Manda and Jesse. I think he's a Luke, am I right? Brayden, I'm sorry, he's a Brayden. Would you stop this uh, picture right there? What a great picture. You know, when babies are born, they have no choice. They are automatically invited 
into parents' arms, parents' loving and caring arms, parents of protection, parents' guidance. There's no option. You cannot get away with it. You cannot get out of your parents' arm. It's their identity. It's their DNA. Because you are born from your parents. That's who we are. We belong to this community. We belong to God's Trinity, divine community. It means we have God's invitation to come to Him. You try to get away from God, you try to get away from God's community, but as long as you believe you are God's children, you have no choice. You are automatically invited into divine community, divine conversation, divine fellowship. But the question is, how would you respond to this God's invitation? How do you respond? Maybe you might want to say, I'm going to respond to God in a way that with my humble heart, I confess my sin and praise Him and worship Him. Or you might say, Jay, I'm not really ready. I'm not really ready to go to church. You know, church is broken. The church is full of broken, damaged and a dysfunctional hypocrite. You are right. Church is broken. Church, church is full of damaged people. Church is broken. You are right. But in, the, but in the Genesis chapter 1, God created universe from nothingness. Nothingness means it's a chaos. God created you and I from the dust. The beauty comes from messiness. The beauty comes from brokenness. That's why we are here as a church. As a church, we have so many different people, so many different characters, so many different ideas. Some people are emotionally healthy, but some other people are not. Some people come from a broken family, but other families come from a healthy family. We are all different people gathered here as a God's community. So the question is, how would you respond to God's invitation? Are you going to keep uh, falling away from God? God keeps calling you and keep asking you to come back to Him. The closer God comes to Him, the further you walk away. But it doesn't really matter. As long as you truly believe you are God's children, we have God's invitation. We have to get close to him and create a divine community where we grow together and pray together and worship together. I don't know if you remember the uh, poem or I don't know if it's a song or a poem or not. Do you remember this? You know, here is the church. Here is the people. Can you do it together? All right? Here is the church. Here is the people. Open it up and meet the people. Start right there because you might not know the next part. Okay? Next part is new generation thing. First day, first day sing then pray, then quietly walk away. Have you heard about this? Can you do? First day, sing. Let's do from the beginning, okay? Here is the church. Here is the people. Open it up and meet the people. Then first day, sing. Then pray. Then quietly walk away. Now sometimes, this is how we go about the church. You come to church, worship, and pray, and quietly walk away. Then we are missing divine community. The church is full of broken people. If you just quietly walk away, we are missing God's community. 
We come to church, worship God, but some people just quietly walk away. And when you quietly walk away, you are missing what other brothers and sisters in Christ are going through. When you quietly walk away, we are missing the Trinity, divine Trinity, God's presence, Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. And a few weeks ago, the forest he c o m e and talked about his life and how he came back to the church <clears throat> and he came back to Christ. It was not big theology. It was not a big Bible study. It was not a big preaching. But it was the moment that one of you walked into him in a market and simply initiated a conversation. That's who we are. That's our identity. As a God's community, we go out, invite people to the presence of God. That's God's community. When you do that, the amazing things happen in our lives. God personally invites us in His presence. God invites us for the divine community, divine uh, invitation. We have that. God is going to give us His comfort, protection. any guidance when we truly understand as a body of Christ. That's who we are. That's our identity. Church is full of damaged, broken, dysfunctional people. But when you quietly walk away, you're going to lose the purpose of God. You're going to lose the beauty of God He intended for us to live by. Stick to God, stick to His presence, pray for each other. That's who we are. That's our identity. That's why we are created in the image of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are deeply in need of you. We do confess our own fallenness, sinfulness, and brokenness. God, you call us into a relationship with those who look differently than we do and those who speak differently than we do. But you call us into a relationship with those people so we might know the image of Christ. We are made in your image and in your likeness. We are in your love. In your name we pray. Amen.